What's going on, spectators? Thanks for clicking that secret unlock button on the holes in your head and shoveling in a heaping dose of spectales. I'm your Synopsis King host, Jake, along with my co-host, a man known around the world simply as the Beardinator. What's going on, Jesus? Uh, beard insurance, man. I had to go get some insurance on my beard recently. That's, that's always fun. I mean, as fun as insurance can get. Well, Jesus, uh, as as much as I'd like to continue on in that conversation about your beard insurance, there really is no time for any Tom Beardery this time around. Uh, this isn't some regular old <laughs> podcast we're, uh, we're doing right now. This is a very extremely special intro because, Jesus, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but we are not alone. Aliens? No, <laughs> no, oh, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> we, we happen to have a third party in on this recording, uh, Jason from certified comic shop, Jason, welcome fellas. <laughs> How's it going? Oh my gosh. I've been sitting in the stream yard thingy for 62 episodes and you finally <laughs> noticed that I've been here the whole time. <laughs> you just, you've just been in the background, just drinking coffee. I've, I've had just... my hand raised, just <laughs> waiting to be called on. So thank you for recognizing the gentleman from Michigan. I Your skin that. is very pale. Why do you look, do you resemble Gollum from Lord of the Rings a little bit? What's going on? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Well, Jason, I'm going to let Jesus tell our listeners a little bit. Jesus, what the hell is Jason doing here on our introduction? We don't let people in on our introduction. What's he doing here? We don't. We don't let any normal people on. But as you all know, Jason is very abnormal. Uh, So Jason (laughs) has, uh, you know, I guess the way we can describe it is Jason was one of our, you know, original, you know, supporters, listeners, patrons, and also one of our first guests. Uh, And now, you know, we get to announce that Jason and Certified Comic Shop are our first sponsor of the show, which I think is just amazing, full circle. I'm really happy, really excited. Yeah. We need the claps. We got to do the yeah. claps. Jason, <laughs> I'm going to start out immediately by saying thank you so much for just all of the support. As Jesus said, going all the way back to episode six, where you are our third guest ever on the show. Uh, you had a fantastic grail tale. Then you were also one of our very first patrons. When we opened up our Patreon for the Scarce Army, you signed up like lightning fast. Uh, once again, supporting our show, at not just listening, but you know, getting behind us and helping us do more with the show. And then now, as you know, we're starting to figure out different ways to to monetize and and try to expand this this show that we have here. You stepped forward and said, "Certified Comic Shop wants to." To get behind this show even more. Uh, so thank you so much for that. I I guess I need to step in here and I, listen, I'm not trying to get you to reconsider, but why? <laughs> so I know what you're thinking. Why would a guy like me hitch my wagon to a couple schlubs like you? No, I'm exactly. just kidding. You too. Exactly. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about you too. There's, there's a real special reason why, because I've known Jesus before there ever was the Spectales podcast. Uh, and if there's one thing I've done since I entered uh, this world of uh, comic preneurship back in 2017 or whatever it was, is I've always wanted to like make friends who like share like the same passions as I do. Uh, and both you fellows are genuine, passionate people that produce one hell of a podcast. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because I've been on it. Uh, I'm saying that because it's true and also because I've been on it. Uh, so there's two reasons there. No, seriously, you guys are genuine. And, you know, there's just there's a lot of content out there. But I just like what you guys do so much. You're both real, genuine, awesome people. And uh, I like to support people that I like. Well, Simple as that. thank you. I can tell you right now, the only reason we are we are being held up by a singular crutch, and that crutch is the Beardinator, actually, <laughs> is really the, the crutch holding up this show. Uh, but the listeners have heard plenty about the beard. Let's go over real quick. What the hell is certified comic shop? Uh, let's start right. with it's certified comic dot shop certified. Oh, and you said, Oh, right. Inflection too, Jake. You learned so fast <laughs> certified comic dot shop. That's how you remember. You got to dot shop certified comic dot shop. So a, it's a terrible name for a comic shop. Uh, <laughs> I should have did what everyone else does and just pull some phrase out of a comic book and add shop to the end of it. 
uh, and Shazam. Shazam. But it's a certified comic shop. I started it. I was having, I was 43 years old. I am about to turn 49 in a couple weeks. Uh, I was 43 when I started it. I was having what some might call a midlife crisis. No. No, I don't think so. Like my wife. <laughs> Others, <laughs> or I like to call it my last chance to make something out of nothing. And uh, I just always had this dream uh, to do something, to make something. And so I ended up landing on starting a comic shop. Anyway, so I've had the shop for uh, five and a half years now. Uh, it uh, started as a side project. It is now my third full-time job behind my regular full-time job, my family, and then the shop. Um, and it's uh, it's amazing just like how it started as an idea and turned into something like kind of big uh, and kind of scary. And I think that's why this really for Jesus and I both felt like I don't, just kind of the insanely perfect match, right? Like our listeners are comic collectors. They are comic book buyers. They're out there looking for what you're selling, right? Like your shop offers a lot of stuff. It offers comic books. It offers the blog and a lot of really good research and information. Uh, it goes into, there's also the white glove consignment service where you offer to help people sell their books, uh, which is again, second to none. I know when you were on our show last time you were talking about some of the massive grails, people contact you about helping them sell. And those things are nothing short of incredible. The fact that you are, you know, are in possession of some of those books, even as we speak right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, uh, that was like a, I started my consignment service, uh, at the shop was open for about a year and a half, just as like, I should probably do this thing. Uh, and very quickly it like overnight became like the biggest part of my business. Um, managed to connect with a, a couple uh, collectors along the way who had extensive, massive collections, and they saw the value in having that white glove consignment service uh, with somebody that they knew and they trusted and they could talk to. Obviously, you can consign your books in all kinds of places online. You can sell them yourself on eBay. You can do whatever, uh, but to like be able to just to like send them here to the shop, know that they're in good hands, they're going to be stored, that they're going to be insured, they're going to be cared for, and then they're going to sell, uh, and you know, not for nothing. Uh, at a very reasonable uh, commission. It's like a win-win for everybody. And it helps keep, and it helps keep uh, the shelves full too, which is really the main reason why I started it. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on as well, right? And in, in our intro, so you can talk to people, so people get to know you, um, <clears throat> so people can understand the person behind Certified Comic Shop. And so once a month, Jason is going to join us for an intro like this to talk about what's new at the Certified Comic Shop. And perhaps we even get to learn a little more about the enigma that is Jason Stump. The enigma that is. I didn't know it was an enigma. So that in itself is an enigma. Interesting. There you go. I'm, I guess I'm interested to learn more about myself as well. You're learning about yourself here, Jason. <laughs> you are an enigma wrapped in a mystery, wrapped in a conspiracy. Yes. Uh, and we are here to unravel you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait to be unraveled. So I, I wanted to do something special for the Spectales audience. Oh, absolutely. Mm. What do you got? Uh, but I didn't. <laughs> but I wanted to. <laughs> it's a thought that counts, Jason. It's a thought that counts, Spectales audience. No, I got uh, right now there's a coupon code. Oh, yes. Um, at certified uh, comic dot shop. And the coupon code is free comic. Now, check this out. When you enter that at checkout, along with your purchase, what do you think you get? I'm going to go with a free comic. A free Dang comic. You're a right, Jake. Uh, <laughs> no, you get a free comic when you use coupon code free comic at checkout. Now, here's all I'm going to say. If two people in this audience, two, that's it, in the Spectales audience, purchase something from the shop before next time I'm on and use coupon code free comic, the next time I come on, I will have a giveaway for everybody with no purchase necessary whoa just for the spectators hey, what well, jason that deal? Just, can we do that I, jason i'm just telling you right now man the scarce army rolls deep i mean you know this you're part of the scarce army so i am throwing you down the gauntlet the scarce army when you when you when you throw down the gauntlet and you challenge the scarce army the scarce army shows up yep so i just need two people to buy it doesn't matter what you buy there's comics on there ranging from 30 bucks all the way up to well, a lot, a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just use that coupon code free comic at checkout. As long as two of you do that next time I'm on, I'm going to have something for everybody. 
Awesome. For free. Everybody go check out certifiedcomic.shop. Link is going to be in the show notes. And do not forget, you are doing everybody else on this podcast a favor if you use the code FREECOMIC at checkout. Not to mention you will get yourself a free comic in addition to the comic you're already buying. So go check that out. Jason, it was a pleasure to have you on. We will be seeing you in another month. uh, And you will be represented on this show henceforth. It's a pleasure, gentlemen. It's an honor. It's great talking to you. Looking forward to uh, closing out the year strong on all counts. Awesome. That is going to do it for this intro. It is time for us to get to the episode. So let's all rejoice. We never have to hear those hemorrhoid cream ads at the beginning of the show again. And don't forget to check out certifiedcomic.shop. This is episode 59. This is a conspiracy. That's what this is. Just begging to course its way through your veins. Let's just for a moment speculate, shall we? You're into comic books, aren't you? I'm a nerd. But you do like comic books. Comic books aren't just for sad nerds anymore. Do you think we need one more? Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Do you think we need one more? Objection, calls for speculation, move to strike. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea! All right, we'll get one more. Ah! Spectre, a comic book podcast with Jake and Jesus. What's up? Welcome back to another episode of Spectales. This week, Jesus and I are going old school, as in we are do not have a guest. But you know what? With listeners like we have, Jesus, we don't need guests, do we? No, man. Our listeners are gracious enough to us to do the heavy lifting. And hey, man, you know, I'm a lazy guy, so I will definitely let them do that for us. And what Jesus is talking about is we happen to have so much stuff to talk about with regards to listeners submitted items, things. Uh, We don't even need a guest this week because we have multiple grail tales that have been submitted by listeners. We also have so much stuff that's been sent to us that they're actually taking care of our recent pickup segment as well. Jesus, this is getting almost ridiculous. No, I mean, not almost. It is. I mean, <laughs> you know, we're just two guys talking comics and, and, and talking to some of these creators and the stuff that's been sent in, you know, over the past year is is like, really, I would have never thought about it, man, like that that could happen. So, yeah, I got to admit, true. yeah, I didn't I didn't get into this podcastery thing uh, for these fringe benefits. I, I, I love the benefits. This is wonderful. But I got to say, it's too nice. It's too much. Yeah, but at the same time, that allows us to do something too nice, which we, we won't go into. Are you alluding to something? Are you alluding no, to something? No, no. Why do you always accuse me of alluding to cool stuff in the future? I don't know. Why? Maybe it's the beard. The beard gives the impression that oh, you're alluding man, to stuff. It does have that. That's one of the <laughs> things that happens with beards. I well, forget. I forget. So... So everybody out there, before we jump into recent pickups and all this stuff that we're talking about with all the the great listeners submitted pieces that we have, uh, I want to talk real quickly about the Spectales Spectator t-shirts. Right, Jesus? We got one more week left. The tater tot, our guy JJ, he's out there, he's hustling, he's twirling that sign on the corner every time you park next to him. One more week left of these super limited uh, t-shirts once once it's gone it's gone yeah you know, once get them, get them now they are only on sale for one more week uh which is actually just to make sure this episode is coming out on the 14th uh the 21st uh end of day on wednesday the 21st of september is when these t-shirts are going to go off sale and once they're done it's going in the vault jj the original jj artwork all of it in the vault Yeah, so get it now. Like I mentioned, get it now because this is the last time you're going to be able to get it. If you guys are waiting on a paycheck or waiting to sell a comic book or to trade a comic book or something, by all means, try to get it done um, to support the show. And this is also for us to give back to you guys because this is a spectator represents you guys as our spectator tots. Exactly. We we came up with the mascot and it only made sense that the mascot be a tater tot as our listeners are spectators. So I also want to give a shout out, hey Zeus, to, uh, we, we've been getting a lot of questions over who designed the mascot. 
Uh, I've gotten several messages. Hey, Zeus, I know you've been uh, asked about it as well. The mascot was designed by our good friend. He's the one who did our logo. He's the one who's done all of our album artwork type of stuff that you see on all of the iTunes and Spotify. Logan Bartles. Uh, he is a Bartles Creative. If you want to look up, if you're looking for design work or anything like that, Bartles Creative, we put his website on the, the show notes. Uh, every time it's just Bartles creative.co that's C O. Uh, so give him, give him all the praise. We, I, I wish we could say that we designed this guy ourselves, but, uh, we, we are just humble dudes who do a podcast. We have no design <laughs> capabilities whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, so. man. And, and, you know, and again, thanks to Logan. And, and we just basically, I mean, he's a, he's a machine, man. We just kind of input some of the things we wanted and he spit out this awesome, awesome, JJ. So, uh, yeah, thank you again, Logan. We appreciate you. And, uh, uh if you, any, again, if everybody, anybody's looking for any design work, by all means, definitely go to him, let him know that Spectales, the guys from Spectales sent you, uh, and I'm sure, uh, he'll hook you guys up. Yeah, he'll do a good job. All right. Well, that kind of takes care of the uh, the nuts and bolts of this. Go take care of, get your shirt, get it before next Wednesday. Otherwise, I don't know what to tell you. You, you know, there's no Christmas coming for you this year, I guess. I don't know. Oh, no, there is. You'll get some coal. You'll get some coal, uh, you know. <laughs> the beard always handing out coal. <laughs> That's, I love it, man. I love doing it. Here, little kid, get get this coal. You deserve it. <laughs> oh, man, your kids are, they're, they're in for it. All right, so. They love it. They love the coal. <laughs> let's, uh, hey, Zeus, this might be a world record, but let's get into this first segment. Pickups. I'm not sure we've gotten to recent pickups this quickly in a long time, Jesus, but that's what happens when we go old school. You and I, we can't keep a conversation long enough, right? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. No, this feels good though, man. We get to talk more about the substance sometimes. Exactly. Right? Yeah, no, I mean, hell, this is what we're here for. Uh, <laughs> so uh, with, with recent pickups, as I, we mentioned earlier, we are going to go with listener submitted stuff. We've had listeners generously reach out to us and ask us if they can send us comic books in the mail. Uh, and it's been happening now for the last year. We've gotten some really cool stuff from lots of people. We briefly talked about uh, with Dan Braun uh, two episodes ago that he had sent us uh, creepy magazines in the mail just because he wanted to. Uh, and it, I cannot get over the fact how mind blowing it is when we get stuff in the mail. Uh, and I always hell, I hate that we, we can't always talk about, we, you know, we get stuff in the mail and I, I want to make sure that we talk about it when we get it. Uh, Jesus, I'm going to let you go first because the one you you're going to talk about here is one that we've actually, we received it about a month, two months ago, almost. Uh, and we just haven't had a chance to talk about it yet. Yeah. You know, with us, you know, doing the JJ stuff and, and trying to get some of these guests on, you know, we, we forget it's not, you know, we just forget to do it, but this is the main, one of the main reasons why we, we do stuff as far as like highlighting our, our listeners and talking about the community and what great community we have and we're part of. So yeah, the first one we're going to talk about is, and we've talked about, you know, this book and, and this series a lot as far as one that we love and enjoy to read and also one for a potentially spec. And I'm talking about uh, the last Ronin from Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. Yep. Um the mini series that was um you know that came out really in the thick of the the pandemic, right? That that had a bunch of uh, paper issues and things of that nature. That's why we we said it was a uh potential uh spec pick because of the the number one didn't get as much um print run as as it normally should have, right? Yeah. Uh well, well like you mentioned about 2 months ago, little give or take, friend of the show, Alex Schaefer, which is S C H I E F C on Instagram sent us three trades, three hardcover trades of the entire run of the last Ronin, the entire mini series of the last Ronin. So again, obviously, you know, one, thank you, Alex. We really appreciate it. Um, we lo love this series. We love the artwork. We love the storyline. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just really a badass storyline. And, and for those of you that haven't read it, I definitely recommend to go pick it up. But we have three of these now, three of these thick, hardcover, really nice copies of these of this book. And so we, in the near future, 
are going to figure out a way how to hand some of these out or give these out to some of our listeners and some people in the community that either haven't read it or want to read it. We're going to do that for you guys. Thanks to Alex Schaefer, a friend of the show and a listener here on Spectales. Yeah, thank you so much, Alex. And and that's what Jesus was talking about a little bit before. What he was alluding to is this is not all gain for us. I, I, we... We, it's awesome that we're receiving this stuff, but we can't keep it all. That's not the point of what we're doing. That's not the point of the show. Actually, the point of the show is actually we wanted to just make friends in the comic book community. We wanted to talk comics, and we've been able to do that with so many amazing people. And when we get sent stuff, we're just going to send it right back out. Uh, you know, as much as I love having so much of this stuff in my possession and these books, by the way, uh, Hey Zeus, the one that you have, uh, I kept two of them. I sent you one and we're going to disperse them and stuff like that. But these are hefty books. Like this hardcover is legit printed. So I, I, it's pretty incredible. Alex, thank you so much for that. Uh, sorry, we weren't able to thank you properly sooner. Uh, but I'm glad that, uh, you know what, this show actually worked out better this way because it's all kind of coming together all at once. Right. Yeah, agreed, man. And, and you're talking about the heft, man. You don't want to get hit on the head with one of these books right now because these, <laughs> these things are hefty. Uh, but yeah, uh, it, it just worked, worked this way out that we get to, you know, tell our friends of the show, thank you on this, on this episode. Uh, but again, you know, just going back to it, it's just really cool. It, it's a cool community. If somebody wants to send an AF-15 to me, you know, I will eventually send it out back to the community, you know, in 50 or 60 years. But it will happen, guys. It will happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, next we need to uh, we need to move along to my recent pickup, which is going to take a minute. Uh, to be honest, we're not even going to be able to talk about every single book. We received a package, uh, and by we, I, I I I received the package, but hey, Zeus, it was addressed to both of us. So I will give you some of these. Maybe I don't know what we're going to do, uh, <laughs> but we received. I I got this package on my front porch. And it was heavy. And my wife was like, what'd you order? I was like, I swear, I didn't order anything. I swear. But she, she, <laughs> she was like, are there comics in that? I was like, honestly, I don't know what's in the box. But it was a very large Amazon box. And the thing was, is like, we had gotten a, like somebody, when somebody reaches out and says, hey, can we have your address? We want to send you something. I want to send you something, something like that. Well, we actually had the winner of this, the, the uh, King size annual, uh, the episode mm-hmm. that we did the giveaway, Jake dash mm-hmm. was the f- uh, grand prize winner, right? He, he, won. not you, not you. Right. Again, no, it wasn't, it was not me. I have no <laughs> alter ego. There is actually a listener named Jake dash. Uh, and he is, uh, I mean, he's been a follower of the show for a long time. He is one of our, he was one of our first patrons. Uh, he mm-hmm. is a member of the scarce army. Uh, he was randomly selected as the grand prize winner, which it couldn't have gone to a better guy. I, I'm so happy he won uh, the grand prize for that giveaway. And then he turns around and sends us all these <laughs> books. I'm telling you, I opened this thing up and there were like five or six mini packages inside the box. And there were, I, I'm going to tell you, I've got them all spread across the room right now. Uh, there's like, I don't know, 50 floppies, maybe. I'm not going to be able to highlight all of these. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, yeah I just remember I just remember you sending me Oh, I like, sent you photos of them all. Because yeah, like six like, or seven photos because it didn't fit all in one. In no, one I had to take so many photos just there. So there's I want to say 40 to 50 floppies. There are four trade paperbacks uh and two uh count them two slabs. And I was like, what the heck? Like and the thing was, is he had, he had reached out via email and he had mentioned, you know, I'm going to send you guys a little something like an A-OK. And, you know, he, I, that's how he put it, right? I'm going to send you a little something, right? A, a little something. And I, was like, <laughs> I responded back to that email. I was like, good God, what is this? You, like, you didn't say that you were going to send a 50 pound package in the mail, uh, filled with comics. So let's talk about some of those books. So I am going to actually pull out my favorite one right now. This is the one that 
I don't know. I don't know that we're going to be able to give this one away, Jesus. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to share it because I want. I want this book. This is not. This is one of the few Ice Cream Man covers I do not. Well, now I own, uh, but I previously <laughs> didn't. This is Ice Cream Man number three, uh, oh, and nice. this is the cover A, uh, and it's a it these Ice Cream Man the early ones, not a high print run on these yeah, early ones. Yeah. Super low, to be honest. And this one is the one with the, I, I don't know if you remember this particular storyline, but it's this guy who, who, um, uh, he's daydreaming in, in a, like a diner and mm-hmm. he's daydreaming about how he could have been like a rock superstar. And mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of a weird, like I, this was one of those storylines where the first couple, I was like, is this a horror comic series? Is it a horror comic series? I, I mean, I think it is. And then this one is this weird, melancholy, strange daydreaming one. I was like, I don't think this is a horror comic series at all. Uh, but <laughs> it's so, well, I, I, I mean that, that one, I remember thinking about that one and being not necessarily horror, but also like what, what your, your, regrets can do to you basically yes yeah yeah there's there's a lot going on yeah but that's that's what makes it the the layers of writing Mm -hmm. going on are so incredible and by the third issue they are completely evident Uh, so um this uh this series of course Drawn by uh, our friend Martin Morazzo, so that that one, I uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I might keep that one. Uh, who knows? Now I'm not going to do this with every single book. Like I said, there's about fifty of them, but I also have to mention this one here. So this is something is killing the children. Uh, I can't remember. This is a number one eighth printing. Eighth printing. Thank you. Eighth so, printing, but you can only get that one. If you bought, I think Berserker number one or something like that. Is that what that was? Because yeah, I, was I like didn't a, own, I don't own that one. Uh, yeah, it was a special thing where you had to buy uh, Berserker one, and then they allowed you to buy that printing of something that's killing children, which is a really cool printing. It also has the the initials on the front that everybody knows it by, yep. which is a S I T C or something, whatever it is. But really cool printing. S I K T C. Yep. Sure. Sickich. Something sure. Like that. Exactly. Sinkevich. <laughs> Sinkovich. Going back to that one now, are we? (laughs) Deep cut. (laughs) Deep cuts only. All right. And then this one is Proctor Valley Road number one. Uh, This is a variant cover. Actually, Mm -hmm. I think this is, this might be second printing. I can't remember. Yeah, it's second printing. Which is very rare. They they did not do a ton of those. Dude, you know, just, just, I I found one of those in a back bin last week for a dollar. Did you really? Yes, man. And I was so mad because they didn't have any uh, bag and board. It was still in really, really good condition. Nice. I was like, I'll take it for a dollar. Yeah, I like that cover too. But I, I, the the rest of the books, I, I mean, they span everything from there's Department of Truth stuff. There's Invincible stuff. There's uh, DC Future State. I'm trying to go through here. Um, and there's just, a there's a die number one too right which is uh something we talked about in last yes episode. yes yeah there's once in future there I, I mean i think the once in future is another one of the like you know the six printings or something like that mm-hmm. it's a number one but there's there's quite a bit of stuff here and a lot of it is very collectible i i'm so surprised in in the the load of stuff that we got uh in addition to that we did get trades one is a um Hardcover, this is Dark Knight Returns, The Golden Child, uh, Deluxe Edition, DC Black Label. Beautiful book. It looks like it's never been read. I mean, this thing looks brand new. Uh, if he read it, he read it with like white gloves on and he didn't open it ever. <laughs> he read it with his x-ray vision. Uh, then uh, he also sent the Totally all, excuse me, the Totally Awesome Hulk, uh, mm-hmm. number one, uh, and the Totally Awesome Hulk, number three. Uh, trade paperbacks. So those are great, which I really like that he did number one and number three, because he's like, listen, you got to commit to reading this, Jake, <laughs> but you got to go get yourself number two. And so- <laughs> That's actually a good run. That's the run where they, uh, the protectors get formed uh, Yep, together. So that, that's a really good run. And I am excited about this one. This one, if we give it away, I'm definitely reading it first. This is Die Number One, uh, Volume One. Sorry, 
Uh, so the first volume of Die, I have been recommended this series so many times by so many people. So mm-hmm. I, I'm going to have to sit down and read that one. I'm excited to read it. Uh, I haven't yet. And so that, again, this is the, this is all one package, everybody. Can you imagine just packing this all up and trying to ship it out? Um, but I, yeah. So the last thing that I'm going to touch on are the, the two slabs that, that were sent because both were 9.6 white pages. The first one is Gideon Falls number one variant cover B, which is an incredible cover. We've talked about Gideon Falls as a potential spec book on this mm-hmm. on this show, uh, and it still is, I think, a very viable spec book if that's something you're looking for. Uh, the variant B cover is horrifyingly gorgeous, <laughs> is yeah. maybe the most appropriate way. Uh so that's a great one. I again I, just receiving any slabs, right? Because those slabs don't come free, right? It's not like they mm-hmm. I mean even if you got the book's cover price, somebody had to pay for the <laughs> the slabbing. <laughs> I so and, and somebody had to wait the 2 years to get it back. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh the other one is Invincible Iron Man number 1. Uh this is the action figure variant cover, uh which is also incredible. Uh, 9.6, uh, it, this is the, I, I don't know if you remember when all those action figure covers were super popular. Mm-hmm. They did a lot with Star Wars, but they, uh, I got to say those covers, like they freaked me out a little bit. Cause I was just I, like, they were so realistic where if you so were, we'll were yeah, if you were looking at it from the wrong angle, you were like, Oh, why do they have a toy in the comic books? Well, not <laughs> actually the toys are quite common, but you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, there's there's some really cool ones out there. I think there's a, a Black Crescenton one that has Kylo Ren on the cover as an action figure. Um, and I think there's a Superior Iron Man one as well. That's really cool, too. So, yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy those as well. Those are re- I think there's a Kid Kaiju one, too. That's really cool. So, yeah, I, I enjoy those as well. It, yeah, absolutely. I, I think that they're they're pretty sweet. Uh, and I actually just going through the stacks here, I just re- remembered I would be remiss if I didn't bring up these two covers, which again, blew my mind to have them. Uh, these, I love these covers. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah, yeah. Stray Dogs. We got Stray Dogs, the, the homage covers, I guess. Mm-hmm. One is uh, Stray Dogs Part 4, and it's the uh, Friday the 13th cover. The other one is Stray Dogs number one, uh, but this is the uh, Dracula cover. Yeah. So, so really... this, I mean, this care package was ridiculous. This this a OK was, it was a OK. It was more than a OK. <laughs> I mean, it was it was pretty a O awesome. So that's that's what I have to say about that. And we're gonna have to figure out a way. To uh to to repopulate these things, we got to put them back out in the world, uh, with new people who are going to love all of them, except maybe that ice cream man cover, which I think I'm going to keep for myself. <laughs> no man, I mean that's what we do. You know, we're basically the conduit. We want to put it back out, pass it forward, pay it forward, if you will, because uh, we love comic books, man. We love comic books. We love we love reading them. We love collecting them. We really love everything about them. So. If we can pass that joy on to other people in the community, uh, I think that's a that's a great thing to do. So we're really excited to be able to do that. And we want to thank Jake again, uh, not Jake here, because yeah. again, I don't know. It could be his alter ego, but Jake. Oh Dash, yes, I we, sent myself books. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I'm doing now, just that, to that's sell exactly this what alter somebody ego. Who's trying to cover the tracks <laughs> would do. No, not seriously, man. Jake Dash is a real person, and. and um, Really appreciate him and appreciate the things he's done for us. And I'm glad he won the last giveaway, man. Well, uh, Jake Dash's giving is not over yet. Um, but in order to continue on all that Jake Dash has given back to the show, we need to move on to the next segment. Grail Tale. Grail Tale. Grail Tale. Grail Tale. Grail Tale. The Grail Tale segment. That's correct. Jake Dash didn't stop at just sending us a box full of 70 books or whatever the hell he sent us, which is ridiculous. (laughs) He actually also sent a listener-submitted Grail Tale. 
And that is not the only listener submitted Grail Tale. Uh, you know, this is season two. So, Jesus, you know what we do. We got to get bigger. We got to do better. Uh, so we've actually got two listener submitted Grail Tales to read on this show. This is the first appearance of a, of a two-time Grail Tale from two different listeners, right? I believe so. All right, man. Well, there's nothing left to do it but to do it. So, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, the first one. Do you want to go first? You want to go with the Jake Dash one? Yeah, I think it's a good segue from you know just to to kind of continue how much he's given to us and to the show and to you guys because you guys get to listen to this awesome girl tale as well. Uh, I think it's a good segue. So I'll go. I'll go ahead and talk about uh, Jake Dash's girl tale. So he sends in an email to us for his growl tale, and he calls it the tale of three. And I'm going to do my best with this. I, I don't really do it because I go in in and out of if I was him reading it or if I was reading it to you guys. So I'm going to do my best with it. So he starts off when he was a kid. He was always watching X-Men and Iron Man animated series on VHS, which is pretty awesome right there and on TV. His dad was a collector, so he remembers getting some Todd McFarlane and Spider-Man and X-Men adventures as some of his first books ever for Christmas. <clears throat> His uncle Jim, on his mom's side, who was a huge pop culture influence on him his entire life, had an enormous collection of comics. Some of his earliest memories are of him sorting, categorizing, making lists surrounded by at least 100 short boxes in his room. Just right there. That's 100 short boxes. Yeah. He had all the great books. Uh, Tales of Suspense 39, Iron Man 1, Silver Surfer 4, ASM 1, Hulk 181, to name a few. All the books he spent the rest of his life regretting selling, even though he made a killing selling them in the mid to late 90s. Iron Man was his favorite character ever, and Wolverine was his favorite X-Men. He always drifted to the B characters, or he, he, but when I say he's Jake, always drifted to the B characters because it felt like he related to them more. He loved War Machine and Gambit and Colossus. He wasn't a huge collector to about his mid to late 20s. He's always held on to all the comics that his dad and uncle Jim gave him and still have them to this day. It wasn't until about age 28, right around 2015 that he started a weekly pool and reading new books. When he told his uncle Jim that he was spending well over a hundred dollars a week on new books, he flipped. He said, those books will never be worth anything. Skip a week and get an Iron Man 118 or 282. Skip four weeks and get an Iron Man one or 55. His Uncle Jim passed away late last year in November of 2021, and they've been close his whole life. So at that point, he quickly pushed Iron Man Keys back to the top of the list of thousands of grails that he wanted. So naturally, 282 was a great place to start. He had no problem pulling the trigger on an eBay purchase uh, that he's specking on to resell a slab or a flip. But when it comes to his own PC, he prefers to find them in the wild. So... Again, not eBay. He wants to find them in the wild. This is where it turned into multiple tales. He had decided that with the boys season three coming, he was going to secure the last 20 to 25 books he needed to complete the series. Found some in his hometown of Phoenix, Arizona, selling the series for $400. He asked if he'd take 350 and he did. A steal of a deal. I watched someone sell that series uh, that night on eBay for over $700. So he got it for half. So he felt great securing a high grade boys number one and having the whole series in general. But now he had about 40 books with a number one around the 9.0 that he could try to flip. He listed them on offer up first to try and get a good trade for something that he wanted for himself. Someone reached out and asked what he wanted for the books. And he said that he'd love to put it toward an Iron Man 1, 55 or 282. Well, the guy had a 282 that he felt was in great shape. He said that he would consider trading issue one for it, but he wanted the lot. I initially said no, but I really wanted the book because it was a high nine copy and it was getting no other interest. Just as I was talking himself into taking the trade, I remember episode one, he thinks of Spectales. And I said, Jesus said, you have to know when to walk away. Sometimes that book isn't meant for you. Finally, I declined the offer. A few weeks later, my second offer came in. The guy said, uh, you you would take an X-Men 266 for the lot. I didn't care if it was CGC three as long as it was complete and connected so he took it in a heartbeat it was a beautiful copy easily at 9.4 9.6 before a press he couldn't be happier and not three weeks later spec tales holds a contest with the grand prize being a cgc 9.4 iron man 282 he entered and he won so this is a forever book for him and feels even more special knowing it came from the scarce 
Bearded Glory Pedigree Collection. <laughs> I mean, that's the name of my collection. So this is the tale of how he secured three of his grails in a high grade. So high grade boys, number one, X-Men 266 and Iron Man 282, which with the pedigree, obviously, on the Iron Man 282. So that is the awesome, awesome tale of three grail tales from Jake Dash. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I love how one, he named your collection, which, you know, that's, you know, that's cool. That's how it's supposed to be done. You're not supposed to name it yourself. Nobody would ever name it themselves. Right? No, You're not, God, that's no. not how. But, but if somebody else names it for you, then it becomes legit and true and the best ever unsurmountable. So scarce bearded glory pedigree collection. There you go. The Scarce Bearded Pedigree Collection. I mean, it doesn't really roll off the tongue very well, uh, but I I like he did use the umlaut over the the A. I think that's what it's <laughs> called, right? The, <laughs> the little two dots uh, to make sure that it's scarce. Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully, CGC uh, for the pedigree label remembers to put that on there. It would be pretty awkward well, if they didn't, right? Yeah, well, I mean, that's fine. You know, we know what it means, but as long as they put a beard on each label, I'm good with it. Golden one at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I got to say, when you do the giveaways, you don't really know, you know, you hope people obviously want the books. I think everybody would, would say that they wanted that grand prize, right? Uh, but when... You don't know though that like oh are we going to give out this this book and it's going to end up getting resold and and that's their prerogative right that's yeah. our our whole thing is is we're just giving this stuff away but for it to end up being a grail tale for somebody else that's actually truly incredible the, this backstory on this book and why he was the perfect winner for it is forever going to to stick with me um, in terms of like, we did the right thing. We, we, the right person won everything. Like it was just meant to be. It's awesome. Yeah, man. And, and, you know, he talked about it a little bit too. And, and, you know, we talked about it too. Sometimes, you know, those books aren't for you. You know what I mean? Like they're just, they weren't for you. And sometimes the books are for you. Right. And, and this one just so happened to be for Jake, right? Like, you know, you're right. Like we, we talk about like we give away books and trades, you know, stickers, cards, whatever, you know, and whatever somebody does with them is up to them. And there's no right or wrong. Right. Like if they want to sell it and that that helps them get to their eventual grail or their eventual, you know, ASM 15, for example, or you know, Marvel Spotlight 5, you know, that's fine that, you know, we help them get to that. Yeah. Right. Or, or, you know, if they're in tough times and they're like, hey, man, this is a quick 200 bucks that I needed. Hey, by all means, you know, we're just giving it away because we want to thank something. everybody for listening. Exactly. You know, it's something we want to do is we want to do for the community. So and at the same time, when something like this happens, it's also great. Right. It's also great. And, and like you said, this is going to stick with me. You know, when he was telling the story, you know, about his uncle. And I've mentioned in this podcast before that, you know, my aunt passed away in 2020 and it, it kind of reinvigorated my comic book, you know, dealings and, and getting back into the community. It just hit home, man. So, again, I'm glad it went to Jake. Um, I'm glad he gets to hold on to it. Again, it's a 9-4 old label. You want to make it a 9-6, 9-8 up to you. Um, but it's yours now, man. And I'm glad it is. Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, I also really do like the fact that we can share that as kind of a follow-up for everybody to to take a look at or listen to uh, for that, that, that giveaway, right? The giveaway was real. We really sent that book out and cause you know, not, I would doubt us, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you know, I still doubt it. I mean, it could just be you with the PO box in Phoenix and then just gets forwarded right back to you. It's just this vicious cycle. <laughs> well, it is pretty convenient, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next Grail Tale. Listener submitted Grail Tale. This one comes from Tim Field. Uh, so Tim had emailed us, and there's kind of a fun story behind this as well. So uh, it, we go through, we get emails f- from time to time from listeners, and it's always a, kind of a fun, unexpected thing when it happens. Even though it continues to happen, I'm still, it's super unexpected. Like, hey, we got an email. Well, this one, 
unfortunately slipped into the spam folder. And that's not a folder that I just actively check regularly. However, I do check that folder at least once a month because when we send out the Scarce Army newsletter, which is for all of our patrons uh, over on Patreon, we send out a newsletter once a month. And unfortunately, one too many times, uh, we send it through MailChimp and sometimes it gets stuck in spam and sometimes it doesn't. Well, this one time it worked out really well for Tim because I was in there searching for uh, to see if the uh, the Scarce Army newsletter had gone to spam, uh, and it actually did. But I was as I was searching through, I see a subject line about Grail Tales. Well, that doesn't that's not supposed to be in spam. Why the hell is that there? So I click into it. Uh, I I assure myself that it's not actually spam. I move it to the right folder uh, and obviously flag the email address as safe. Uh, And it turns out it's an incredible grail tale submitted to us by a listener who has been listening for a long time, catches up on the show every week while he's walking, it sounds like. And I don't know. So I, I responded. It had been several weeks since the email had originally sent out, but Tim was nice enough to forgive us for not responding right away, uh, which I try to do as best as I can, uh, as often as I can on emails. So it, here's here's the, the grail tale. I think you're going to like it. Jake and Jesus, I am going to tell you a story about acquiring a big grail book that I didn't even know I was going to get. First, a little background about me. I started seriously collecting comics in 1991 when my college roommate told me about this upstart company called Image Comics. I got my first copy of Spawn Number 1 Newsstand Edition, and I was hooked. I collected everything Image put out and a few other titles in Valiant, Dark Horse, and Marvel that I enjoyed reading for the next few years until I moved to my new job in upstate New York. With a full-time gig as a music teacher and recently engaged to my wife, uh, life took over and I pretty much stopped collecting altogether. Uh, fast forward to last year. So there's a little bit of a gap here. It's, it seems like it might be almost 20 years worth of a gap. Uh, my kids are in their senior year of college, twins at the same school. Hey, Zeus, another uh, fellow twins uh, person. Twin dad. Twin yeah, dad, twins dad. Uh, senior year of college. And my wife and I are finding we have more time to do things that we used to love. For me, It's collecting comic books, which I started when Marvel released their first Alien series. Not a bad series to pick up. Yeah. (laughs) It is the only title I collect because it is easy to get carried away and start buying up everything that looks cool to me, which is (laughs) absolutely true. It helps that comic shops I go... It helps that the comic shop I go to is where my kids are going to school three hours away. There are closer ones, but I really like this shop and it gives me another excuse to go visit my kids. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense too. Yeah, if the comic legit. shop is three hours away, you, you limit how much you can buy. So one day my wife suggests we go to this auction to raise money to reopen a theater in the town she works in. I have never been to an auction before and honestly, I just want to see what life what it was like and to hear the rhythmic uh innotation of the auctioneer yeah i that's also that's a big draw for me too uh before the auction begins we register and start looking through the items that were donated to raise money for the theater i had no idea i what was going to be there. Mostly it was made up of antiques, furniture, and Broadway memorabilia from the 80s and some gift certificates to local restaurants. At the end of the table was a group of five boxes that were covered in dust and loaded with assorted pieces of ceramic dishes, old magazines, and one box of raw comics without a single bag or board. Now, I am not very knowledgeable of comics in terms of key issues and first appearances, but as I am going through the books, I see it. Just one of many books collecting dust. At first, I wasn't sure and had to phone a friend to make sure I was actually seeing what I was seeing. He confirmed it and was already asking me questions about it and making me offers. I tried to remain calm and did not want to draw attention to what I had just discovered. I went back to sit with my wife and told her I had found something and how high could I go? <laughs> could I bid on it? 
Unfortunately, <laughs> the lot of comics was last on the auction block. So I'm sitting there jumping out of my skin, watching the box and hating everyone, everyone uh, <laughs> who even goes near it. The box belongs to me after all. So get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I heard one guy saying, all I want are the comics. I looked at him pretending to be Cyclops, blasting him into the next county with my gaze. The auction begins with lot number one, and I have to wait until lot 115. Oh, my God. Oh, God. That would have been just grueling. And the auctioneer was sick, so I didn't even get to hear the professional auctioneer (laughs) and had to sit through some volunteer stumble through item descriptions like Jake explaining a synopsis. (laughs) Thank you for that. (laughs) Jake butchering one, butchering a synopsis. I'm sure. See, Tim, I knew you had that line here, and that's why I chose to read yours because I've been trying to not butcher it. I feel like I've been doing an okay job. Uh, it takes hours watching beautiful antiques go for less than asking price. To stay awake, I bid on a nice toolbox loaded with tools and managed to win. My wife won a gift certificate to tour a local well known farm. We are now three hours in and i am still waiting the only plus is that the crowd is thinning out so that there are now only about 20 people left fine and that's actually really good i didn't thought Mm -hmm. about that right like if the auction box is on the very end then you you're just waiting people out and people just don't have time to sit there for that long okay so Finally, lot 115 is up and I am ready for battle. Coolly, I sit back and wait to see who is bidding. Just two people are bidding, so I think the time is right. I raise my sign offering my first bid. It is quickly beaten, so I try again. Still not enough. So one more time, I raise my sign. That was it. Going once, twice. My wife elbows me and says, bid or you're going to lose it. What? I thought I was the high bid. Three times sold. Did I miss it? Who won? Sold to bidder number 25. That's me. I won. It was over so quickly. I could hardly believe it just happened. My wife said she would settle up while I got my truck to load up our other items Uh, while trying to look calm. We loaded everything up, said goodbye to a few people that my wife worked with, uh, and off we go. At home, I immediately took out the comics to carefully examine what there is. Nothing too impressive until I get to the Grail book. So there are about 76 books, unbagged and very dusty and musty smelling. My winning bid... $65, $65, which works out to be 85 cents per book. I think that's pretty good price for a Hulk 181, even if the MVS has been cut out. It's, it's a pretty low grade book that will be sent out for cleaning and pressing before being slapped. The whole experience has ignited the love I used to have for comics and having binged your awesome podcast while doing my daily walks. Uh, It's just a matter of time before I'm enrolled in the Scarce Army. Uh, So I want to start by thanking Tim for such a really well-crafted story. I love that he didn't reveal what the book was until the ending. When I originally read this, this email, I was on pins and needles uh, all the way into the end. Cause I was like, wait a minute. He didn't say, he described that he had found a book, but he didn't say what it was. Tim, God, tell me what it was. <laughs> and, and then of course you get to the end. Uh, Tim also, he waited on this one. Hey Zeus, after I had responded saying, uh, you know, Oh my God, I'm sorry. You know, that we missed this initially. He ended up sending a picture of the book and he says it's a low grade. Uh, I am telling you right now, it is not that low of a grade. I, I I'm gonna oh, have to no. send it to you. Uh, Dude, send you the, the photo. Pops. The red's popping. Dude, the 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 red is good. The I, I I from what I can tell anyway. Obviously, it is just a photo, but there there are certainly dings on it. It's got it's got its fair share of dings, but this thing is this is not a low grade book. This this is probably five maybe higher. Um. So- I mean, unless there's like massive water damage or something like that, because the corners look good. 
the I mean, th- there are some dings. I can I can see them. Uh, but this thing, man, I don't know. I- I'd have to take a closer look, but I, this is not like a one or two or three. This is much no. higher. Yeah, this is definitely mid, at least mid grade. You're, yeah, you're talking about five, four and a half, five, somewhere around there. Um, but man, dude, eighty five cents. Oh, for that? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> so this is this is awesome to me, man. This is like these are one of these these uh, you know barn finds, you know rummage sales. Like this is what we do. This is this is what the community does, and and they're so awesome to to hear and, and find out about. And I mean, 65 bucks, dude, you know, for the whole lot, which I'm sure there was probably some other cool stuff in there as well. Yeah. But it's just, and, and you know, when you're going up against somebody and just the whole thing, the whole, the whole story, man, is just, it's just awesome, man. I think it encompasses, you know, what we're about and why we do what we do. Yeah. And I, I, it's his grail book. So I, I, I doubt he will sell it, but he got that book. And he could probably sell it for two grand, right? Even without the Marvel yeah. value stamp. I, I know that even even the green label goes high. Well, dude, yeah. Well, right now, that book is so hot right now, man. All, all X-Men books are really hot right now because of what's coming, even though it's not coming right now. Initially, people know it's coming. And just Wolverine is, is, is I mean, we've talked about it, right? We, we've even, I think we said it on floppies at, at some point that, you know, the 181 is kind of the, the, what is it? AF 15 of, of the bronze age, right? It's like the big book of the bronze age that a lot of people want that one. I mean, obviously you have like Ninja Turtles, stuff like that, but from a Marvel standpoint, that's the book, that's the character that has a lot of like, you know, everybody knows them. Right. Yeah. And then they have oh, the whole movie franchise around them. So yeah, it's, it's a big book, man. Big grill. Yeah, no, I'm completely. Uh, so Tim, very well written, very, uh, very good storytelling. And, uh, I appreciate all the, the humor in there. I'm assuming you were just joking about me butchering synopsises. Everybody knows no, I no. am tremendous at no, synopsis not reading. True. Not true. Not true. <laughs> he meant every single word of that, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, uh, it, Please, so hopefully everybody out there enjoyed those two listener submitted Grail Tales. We are always looking for great stories about collecting comics. If you if you're out there listening and you got a story of your own, please feel free to send it in. We would love to hear your to- your story. Uh, you can send it to spectalespodcast at gmail dot com, or if you just want to email to say hello and you haven't reached out yet, we're always happy to to talk to people. We love talking about comic books. Uh, I mean, that's obviously why. We we do the show and uh, we like listen uh hearing listeners reach out and and talk to us about what comics they're collecting and anything so uh reach out if you'd like uh but thank you to jake and thank you for tim uh for throwing those our way uh they were both extremely enjoyable all in their own in their own right for sure all right let's move on to the final segment of this show speculation The speculation segment. Hey, Zeus, uh, this one you're pretty old hat at. Why don't you go ahead and kick us off? All right, man. I'm going to kind of tie this to Tim's grail tale. So I, I like talking about nostalgia. I like talking about, you know, us older folks or getting older folks that have been in the in the collecting and comic book uh, community and, and reading and collecting for a while. And a lot of stuff that, that, you know, talks to us is nostalgia, you know, in the girl tell, you know, previously from Jake too, we heard about, you know, watching animated, the X-Men, the animated series on VHS, right? So that's old and that's old, old technology, old stuff like that. So I'm going to touch on another piece of nostalgia that I forgot I had that I grew up with. And I was like, oh man, I remember this weird TV show. I remember this weird TV show that was kind of adult and I wasn't supposed to be watching it. And I remember it got a lot of, you know, cool stuff from it and, and, and there was smoking in it. And, you know, my parents wouldn't let me watch it, but I was still sneaking in. I was like, what show is that? And I kept looking for it. It took me a while before I finally found it. And I'm talking the none other than Duckman. Do you know Duckman, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't thought about Duckman in a long time. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Duckman 
was originally a comic book that was turned into a cartoon. Really? Uh, the f- yep. The first appearance of Duckman is in a Dark Horse Presents number 22 from 1988. That's the first one, right? That's the first appearance. That book is going for a high of tw- 20 bucks. All of 20 bucks. You can get that book. Maybe because it doesn't have the greatest cover. I don't know. I'm just saying. But then also, two years later, they, they, they had such success with the character that made, they made a one-shot, the first solo Duckman issue, Duckman number one, in September of 1990. And the writer and creator is also the writer for the show, Everett Peck. Now, I, I had you know thought about this. I, I, I said, man, this is cool. I want this book. On the cover, it's the same guy you see on the cartoon. I just thought it was so funny. I just thought it was so different at the time that cartoons could do that. Unfortunately, Everett Peck passed away in June of this year. I didn't know that going in. I didn't know that going into, you know, looking for this book. But he passed away at the age of 71. He's known for Duckman and then also a secondary series that came out in the mid-2000s, 2008, I think, or something like that, called Squirrel Boy. Um, so he was a writer. He wrote for, you know, New Yorker, Playboy Time, a lot of places. But the main things he was known for were Duckman and Squirrel Boy. So my spec picks for this week are Duckman number one from September of 1990 and Dark Horse Presents number 22, the first appearance of Duckman from September of 1988. And always going after those deep cuts, aren't you? Dude, I, I just think like, again, as, as you know, people are age get older. I mean, you you saw it, right? You knew, you know about Duckman, right? Yeah. It was nominated for four Emmys, man. It was a very successful cartoon. It was a different thing in this time. I think it was ahead of its time, honestly. So I'm sure there's a lot of a lot of you know people our age that that grew up on that and they're going to want it. And and I haven't even looked at the census. I'm gonna look at the census real quick while you talk, so I could tell you how many are on on the census. Yeah, go right ahead. I'm gonna jump into my spec then, if that's uh, if that's all right. Sure. So. Yeah. My spec is going to call back to uh, a book I have talked about. I've used it as a recent pickup, uh, and we've we've talked about uh, Man Thing before. Uh, we did an entire, not quite an entire episode, but we talked very heavily about Man Thing in. It was an episode we had de- did in uh, October of 2021. So it's been almost a year where we're really trying to decipher between what was the Man Thing book to pick up uh, because. Uh, in all honesty, you know, the first the first appearance of Man-Thing is in Savage Tales magazine number one. That is an expensive magazine for a number of reasons. Uh, but in general, it's a magazine. It's a hard it's a hard book to get uh, in high grade. And and ultimately they are pricey. It's just already a very pricey book. You're looking at uh, just to get a mid grade. You're going to be spending uh, upwards towards a thousand dollars, and now that Man Thing has just been uh, revealed to be in Werewolf by Night, uh, that's going to be re- the special being released this October. Uh, the book is only going to continue to climb, but there's there's a couple other covers that have also gotten very popular. Uh, another one is Fear Adventure Into or Adventure Into Fear. I don't know why they. Yeah, that's how it is. Adventure Into Fear. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Adventure Into Fear number ten. Now, this is the first headlining Man-Thing feature. So Man-Thing is actually on the cover, like in the title. Uh, It's with Man-Thing, Adventure into Fear with Man-Thing. So Mm -hmm. this one, this one's gotten very pricey. Uh, This is a book that you probably could have gotten a year ago for under $100. You're going to be hard pressed to find a a higher grade copy anywhere in that realm, uh, especially right now. But here's the thing. There's almost nothing special about that book. It's a cool cover, right? And and yes, it's the first time Man Thing is is the name, the title is actually on the cover. But this is not his first appearance in comic books. This is not this is not a, a first of anything. It's not even his first time being on the cover of a book. If you want to go for his first cover appearance ever, that is Astonishing Tales 13 which you can still get for under $100, right? Or if you want to get Man-Thing's first appearance in a comic book, uh, second appearance ever, but first appearance in a comic book book, you have to go to Astonishing Tales number 12. Now, that's the book that I had brought up earlier. I I used it 
about a year ago as a recent pickup where Mm -hmm. uh, my son and I had made a trip to Kansas City and we had um, stopped at a couple of shops. And that was one that I had picked up. I think I got it for, I don't know, 20 bucks. I can't remember. It was, it was an inconsequential number uh, essentially. Uh, But I got it very cheap. It was a nice copy of the book. And that book is still not moving, by the way. Um, Even with the man thing news, it is still not getting a lot of movement. And it is, so the second appearance and origin of man thing, but it is his first appearance in comic books. And I still am unsure about why it it hasn't moved more. So I know people are chasing this, this really awesome red cover, the fear uh, adventure into fear. Number 10, I'm telling you right now, I don't think that's the cover to go after. I I know the market does what it does and people are going to do what they do. um, But if you're chasing that cover, I still got to ask why, right? If you like the cover, that's great. Go after it. But it is not a, it's not a first anything uh, outside of the name man thing is, is on the cover. Ooh. <laughs> uh, <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, don't you have the Savage Tales number one? Yeah. What What is that doing right now? Oh, it's, it's, uh, pretty price it's moving <laughs> yeah it's it, it's up there uh what, and what, there's there's a lot of them out there for sale uh what grade is yours in uh 6.5 6.5 okay so i'm gonna tell you something uh because you know i'm getting ready for you know whatever i'm gonna be doing later but uh this book is moving a lot yes yes i the was mo- actually gonna bring that one up uh you are holding in your hands adventure into fear number 11 right no, 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 no. I'm, Which one I'm, is that? I'm, I'm <gasps> holding the Man Thing number one from 1974, the first solo of the Man Thing. Yes, with a with an awesome cover and the awesome ribbon at the bottom that says, "Now in his own magazine, Fear Fraught first issue." Now, this is a really interesting. I'm I'm glad you brought this up for your spec because this is really interesting, man. And I've been looking at this all weekend, man. One, because I have this book, uh, which I bought for Peanuts, and I'm trying to move it because, you know, Man Thing is not a big deal to me. It's just something where I can make some money on it and then put it into what book that I want that I'm looking for. But th- this Man Thing ordeal, because his first appearance is in Savage Tales number one, really muddies the collecting on on what moves and what doesn't move. So those that you've talked about, it's real muddy, man. Some people want it, some people don't, some people. But I don't see those moving as much as this one is moving. The man thing number one from 1974 uh, and the price. And, and I'm not saying like price wise, like maybe those are, are probably worth more or, or are priced higher. But the jump that they've had is not anything near the, that this the man thing number one from 1974 has had. Yeah. I mean, really, you know, reader copies that are barely tat like tattered, holding on together by, you know, spit and bubble gum. <laughs> are $65, $75 right now. That that price a year ago, you could have gotten like a 7.0, 8.0, 9.0 at that point. Yep. Now those 8.0s are like $335, $400. So it's just really interesting when the first appearance is not, it, it's in a magazine for the thing that we talked about, the comics code, right? Yep. They couldn't put it in comic books. So they had to put it in, in a magazine to get around the comics code. But then that muddied it for collectors because collectors don't really like magazines per se, not everybody, right? Like everybody has their own, but in general, they do not like um, the first appearance to be in a magazine. So then that leaves you with, well, do you want the first appearance in a comic book? Do you want the first cool cover? Do you want the first, solo issue like what do you want and so i think that's why we're, we're seeing some real real um what is it called variance in these prices among the this this character yep and it's it's just a muddied character in general as far as where the first appearance is and and how the character was used sporadically for a few years up until he actually got his own title and that's the thing that makes it so interesting because then what do you actually, where do you put your collecting dollars and does the, the, the character mean anything to you? Because like you said, care, you know, the character isn't a, a big thing for you. 
Uh, so you, you know, you're just going to move the book while the book is hot and there's nothing wrong with that. That'll it, help you pay for another book that means more to you. Yeah. And, and you know, for me, I I would more, and I'm not a DC guy, but I'd be more interested for me in a, in a, in a swamp thing, right? Is it the swamp thing? What is it called? Yeah. Swamp thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Swamp thing is the, uh, I, I would say probably superior as in terms of characters man thing is just a derivative of him uh but it doesn't yeah, necessarily yeah, a, make he, him he, not a good character yeah i'm not saying i'm just saying like for me specifically yeah. yep. for me and, and and part of that reason too for me would be remember i told you that dc app show that they killed dc killed for no reason or i mean whatever reason they had it was a good show now there's rumors that that's coming back Really? Right. That bring, yeah, that they're bringing it back in 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 a certain uh format or, or with the same people and writers and all this stuff. So there's rumors around that they're circling. So I think Marvel was preempting them, right? Getting Man Thing up there and 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 you know derivative character like you talked about. Um, but again, that's just to me. And, and don't get me wrong, Man Thing is a great character too. I, I really like Man Thing. I just I, I I got onto him a lot later in my collecting and my my comic book phase. Uh, so that's why he's not as important to me. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he's not to other people. Well, I I gotta say I just really love the uh, the the Conan the Barbarian cover of Savage Tales number one. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's disgustingly awesome. Yeah, dude, it's it's a classic classic cover. So I, I feel like I, I, even if Man Thing wasn't in that book, that book would be collectible and desirable. And I think that's but why that, the price never really drops too much. It's not high exclusively because of Man Thing. It's just it's a very man. classic cover. So you know the thing I I think about with that book too is is two things. Damn, I wish it was a comic book. But if it was, we would not have gotten that artwork on it because no. the reason why that artwork was done that way is because the artist knew that it wasn't going to get shrunk down. Uh, so they actually painted it on that that size. Mm-hmm. So that's why we got that that awesome cover. Exactly, and yeah, it still still stands up to this day. It's just, yeah, I mean, you want to hang that thing on your wall. So, yep. All right, well, that is that's gonna conclude the episode. We managed to get through it all, uh, really, just because of the help of our listeners. They gave us all the content. All we had to do was talk about it. Yeah, so that's the heavy lifting for us. Exactly. Uh, if you are out there listening and uh, you are enjoying the show, we'd like to invite you to actually go and do a review of our show. We actually haven't had a review on Apple or Spotify in a little while. Uh, please go ahead and give us five stars. Uh, write a real quick review how you're liking the show. Uh, we would really, really appreciate it. Those reviews do help other people find the show. Uh, you know, and as we've demonstrated here, we've got a lot of listeners out there, very diverse and and all over the country uh, with all sorts of grail tales. So the easier they can find us, the more grail tales we're going to get. So we would appreciate that help out everybody. Uh, everybody else, if you want to reach out to us, you can email us spectalespodcast at gmail.com, or you can go over to uh, Twitter uh, at, at spectales pod or Instagram at spec underscore tales underscore podcast. And uh, if you just Google Spectales Podcast, you're going to find our website and everywhere else that you can find us online. So thanks, everybody, for listening. We will be back again next week with another guest, another special grail tale. Until then, have a good week. With the Planet Fitness Black Card, you don't just get a great workout, you get a great perk out. Because your membership is packed with perks. For $1 down and $24.99 a month, you'll get perks like access to any of our 2,400 clean and spacious locations. Bring your friend anytime and both work out with tons of equipment that'll give you that big fitness energy. Relax in the Black Card Spa and more. Work out and perk out with the PF Black Card. Join for just $1 down and $24.99 a month. Join the Judgment Free Zone today. Deal ends Thursday, August 10th. See Home Club for details. 
uh, which is why it fits, right? I don't need to tell people where they can go buy their next motorized vehicle. Uh, I, that I am not the person to ask. I say words like motorized vehicle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to cut you out on it if you didn't cut yourself out. Who says motorized vehicle? Let me go get in my motorized exactly. vehicle. Exactly. <laughs> this is why our show should not be giving people pointers on where to go buy their next motorized vehicle. Uh, but what- I was just going to say, I have a really big problem with that ad placement for like, like a Vroom or a Carvana or whoever on a comic book podcast, because we're spending all our money on comics. Exactly. <laughs> we we ain't got time no for car. that shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, we drive our comics to work, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> we got to get more comics. <laughs>